All right, I am the last talk for today. Um, today I will be talking about Iceberg and Python. Um, let me move this away from the bottom so folks can see the bottom of the screen. Yeah, so uh, yeah, um, today I'll be talking about Iceberg and Python. I think a lot of the Iceberg world is very SQL centric, very Java centric. So hopefully this will be a little bit of fresh air uh, for everybody um, in the crowd. Um, so quick introduction uh, about me. Uh, my name is Jay. I'm CTO at Eventual. Uh, I'm actually from Singapore, but I'm now based in the US Bay Area. Uh, way back when, and I worked at Shopback when they were a very small startup in Singapore, and that was in 2015. Uh, but yeah, now I'm used, I'm based in the US Bay Area. Um, my co-founder here, Sami, has challenged me today to speak <laughs> in English. So in Singlish, sorry, I will try my best. Uh, I haven't given a talk in Singlish before, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, so my background, I uh, work at biotech and self-driving uh, at a company called Freenome and at Lyft Level 5. Um, and I've always been a data person, working kind of in the intersection of uh, data warehousing and also machine learning and data infrastructure, right? So kind of in that weird intersection of uh, SQL, but also if you need to do things with vectors, high torch, GPUs, uh, things I've built before, I've built a lot of distributed data loading infrastructure for training. Uh, so that was before kind of AI and ML, uh, a lot of computer vision things for um, uh, you know self-driving. I've built a lot of data warehousing for health bio kind of data, but also you know large streams of video coming in from your cars and, and your fleets of machines. And uh, yeah, so most recently at Eventual, we are building a distributed data engine. It's called Daft. It's completely open source. Uh, I'll share more details at the end about it. Uh, the, the focus of the talk today is going to be uh, very high level about Iceberg and uh, Python, but I think using that, I'm going to try to introduce a lot of these concepts so that people can uh, you know, see that, yeah, there's a world uh, of Iceberg that actually extends into Python and actually extends into AI and ML. Um, so overview of today, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about Iceberg overall, and then maybe ask ourselves the question, how do we use Iceberg today? And then ask ourselves the other question, which is how do Python developers want to use Iceberg? And uh, lastly, we're going to do a live demo because what's a Python presentation without some live coding, right? Um, so just a show of hands, who has not heard of Iceberg before today's meetup? One person, okay. Um, who has used Iceberg? Uh, who uses Iceberg in their daily jobs? <laughs> okay, 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 a few, a few. Uh, who are Spark users in the crowd? The same people who use Iceberg are the same people who raise their hands uh, for Spark. Okay, beautiful. So um, let me start with what is Iceberg? I feel like people, you know, complain a lot of different things about Iceberg, right? Because Iceberg, is, when you think of it, it's actually a couple of, of different things. Number one, it's a specification. So if you go to the Iceberg website, it will fully lay out to you a description of Iceberg. It's a definition of a system for you to work with tables of data. So if you have tables, uh, tables have rows and columns. They have each column as a type and you want to work with them, uh, especially in the cloud, you will use Iceberg on top of it, right? So it's a description of a system. Um, however, the description of, of the system isn't very useful, right? You need the ability to interact with the system. And therefore Iceberg is also actually a library. So you can download the Iceberg libraries primarily uh, the Iceberg jars, which are Java JVM libraries. Uh, we will also in introduce later on the Python libraries. Uh, but primarily, uh, Iceberg was built for the JVM ecosystem, and so they were jars, right? And then Iceberg is a table format, meaning that uh, you can inter interact with Iceberg tables, and they actually abstract away under the hood parquet files. And so you no longer have to work with files directly. You interact now with tables. And lastly, Iceberg is also a data catalog, meaning that you can hit the Iceberg catalog and ask it, give me table A, give me table B, give me table C, right? Write to table A, write to table B. And you can also do things like uh, read from table A, read from table B. So Iceberg is kind of all of these things, but basically it gives you the ability to work with tables of data in the cloud. Um, and this is kind of the dream of Iceberg, right? That like you have this underlying storage layer, Iceberg, and it's giving you tables of data, and then you can use any compute engine that you want, right? So if you if you want to do distributed computing, there's things like Spark, there's things like Daft, which I work on, 
Uh, if you want to do local computing on your single machine, you, I don't I don't care about cluster. My data is small enough. I'm reading a small partition. You can use pandas, everybody's favorite Python thingy. Um, there's a lot of new kits on the block. WDB, Polaris, yeah. DAP is also extremely, extremely good local performance. And then, yeah, this proprietary engines. Uh, the company that I, I started is called Eventual. But, you know, things like Snowflake, BigQuery, everybody's support that I've heard nowadays. You can actually use a lot of these proprietary engines as well. Um, but that's the idea, right? That like iceberg is down at the bottom. Everything can read it and you can kind of pick and choose what tool you want. However, I would argue that in reality, this is more what it looks like. You have iceberg at the bottom. Uh, you have all these iceberg jar releases. And it mainly supports JVM compute uh, engines, right? And I put a number one next to Spark because really, like everything is Spark first. You know, S3 tables was released. The first thing that it supports, Spark, right? And uh, I think it was especially EMR Spark. Um, and so then, yeah, you have all these other JVM based compute engines that have that, you know, a, I guess have that bleed over effect because Spark is the number one thing. Everything is a jar. Now all the JVM based compute engines reap those benefits and also can can use uh, all that uh, advancement, right? And so in real in reality, actually, your users may not even know that they're using Iceberg. Their like primary interface to the tables is using something like Spark, right? And so they use Iceberg through a data engine, and historically that is Spark. And so you know to further reinforce my point, this is the Iceberg release page. If you look at all the release stuff, what do you see? They are all jars, jar, 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 right? There's no mention of Python, no mention of real, nothing in there. It's all jars. Um, and so I think that this is a missed opportunity. Why do I think so? Number one, Python is the language of ML and AI today. I think that's undisputed, right? Um, local development on data, regardless of whether you're doing ML or AI, usually happens in a local environment on a Python notebook, right? And lastly, Python and the JVM do not mix well. Uh, and so I, I typed this in, in Google today. I searched Py4j error. Uh, so Py4j is the uh, Python Java library. And the autocomplete, the very first thing, Py4j error PySpark. It shows you how painful this, this development experience is, right? Um, Python and the JVM really do not mix well. It's a horrible user experience uh, for, for your users who are trying to do Pythonic things on your iceberg tables because they are forced to go through uh, the Python ecosystem. No, sorry, the, the JVM ecosystem. So welcome Pi Iceberg. I think just within the last like two years or so, Pi Iceberg has gotten a lot of momentum. Um, we at DAF actually have been collaborating quite heavily with the team at Tabular before the acquisition, post acquisition as well, uh, on making this vision of like Python with Iceberg a reality. And so now, uh, you know, the me here, right? It's like, oh, like I don't want Spark, yes, as a Python developer, but I want all these tools, right? WD, Pandas, Polaris, NumPy, PyTorch, DAF, and the way you do that is instead of consuming Iceberg through a Spark jar, you consume Iceberg through Pi Iceberg, which is a client library in Python. Uh, but then all these compute engines, that's primarily what the user sees, the users interacting with a compute engine such as Daft. Um, and so how does a Python developer, what do I want as a Python developer? Uh, number one, I need to be able to pip install it. And I don't want to spin up a Docker container. I don't want to have to install OpenJDK. I don't want to worry about my version of my jars. Pip install, and that's it, right? Uh, number two, I need whatever tool I use to easily integrate with NumPy, Arrow, PyTorch, uh, Pandas. Uh, it has to just work well with everything else that's nice about Python. If not, why am I using Python in the first place? Number three, local development. I don't want to touch a cluster. I don't have to run something else in order to use your product. And then lastly, I need seamless scaling. Yes, I'm working today on my laptop, but tomorrow I'm going to run it on a cluster. Right? I'm, I, am, I am going to try to like toss it over the fence to run on production data. So I need this effortlessly scale to terabytes and petabytes. Um, and so that's why we're building DAP. This is my, my main pitch slide, I guess. Um, DAP is a, number one, a batch analytical engine. We do provide a SQL interface. You can run this on Python, just li literally a Python string that's a SQL string. Um, it's a batch data processing engine. And so it's meant also for large scale transformations of data on large amounts of like petabytes worth of data. Um, it's, it works really well with ML and AI data transformations. If I have time later during the demo, I can show you. But what that means is that, yes, we are a Python first 
uh, data frame API, but under the hood is actually written an accelerator in Rust. And so you get all the kind of SIMD and acceleration benefits of Rust, especially in the cloud with async Rust. And it, we, we also built DAF to be multimodal. For example, you can have columns of images in DAF. You can have columns of tensors in DAF. You can run models with GPUs in DAF. Right? These are all things that you want to do when you're working with multimodal data, including large amounts of text. You might have a whole book in a row. Right? You might have a large video in a row. Uh, that's all things that you support in DAF. And lastly, we built this to work at any scale. It works really, really well on your laptop. It works really, really well in the cloud when you need to run this at large scale. So demo time. Um, I'm going to be very brave today and start from completely from scratch, no installations. Uh, so that that's what uh, Python's supposed to be good for, right? We'll see. We'll see if it lives up to it. OK, let me zoom in. All right, can everybody see? Let me zoom in a little bit more. OK, so I'm, I have nothing installed right now. How fast do you all think it is to install Daft, Iceberg, everything? Guess. Someone has it a guess. Three seconds. OK, so I'm going to install from this requirements file. Let me, let me, let me show you what's in a requirements file. Uh, so it's literally just Pi Iceberg and then Daft and then some other utilities to like, uh, you know, um, I, I want to use them for the demo, right? Pip install. Oh, no, I'm wrong one. UV pip install. Oh, sorry. I'm going to initialize a environment first. I don't want to dirty my laptop. So this is my environment. Source, UV pip install. And that was it. Now we have Iceberg and Daft on your machine. I think that was less than a second. Um, and now when I want to play with my stuff, I'm going to start a notebook. Now the notebook's coming up. Um, and this is my notebook. Let me zoom in. Zoom in. And uh, now we can do a lot of the same operations that you might want to do with something like Spark when you're creating a table. Right, so let's you know create a catalog. This is a local catalog. I don't even need a Docker container because I can actually use locally on my machine a SQLite database as my catalog. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to create a table. All right, table's created now. I'm going to load the table in. And so now I have a iceberg table. Let me print this table object. Ta-da, I have a table now. Uh, it's, all, it's all local. It's all in this uh, you know, namespace DB, whatever stuff, right? It's all there. Now, again, primarily your users are going to be interfacing with iceberg to a compute engine. So let me show you Daft. Um, so all you got to do, import Daft. Now take that very same table object we had from before. Um, and then you can now do a read iceberg, pass in the table object, and show up. Right? It has nothing in it right now because we just created the table. Let me read this like data.csv. And I'll show you what the data.csv looks like. Here, it's just J, Sammy, and Desmond. <laughs> a country age. I'm not actually that old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're actually that old. Uh, and then now I'm going to write to the table, right? And so after you write to the table, it's going to tell you, hey, I added you know, a new file in the table, yada, yada, all nice icebergy stuff. And then, yeah, now you read from the table, and bam, the data's in there, right? You can keep writing to the table uh, like that. And then you can show more data. Yeah, more data's in there now. So it gives you this very like interactive flow in your notebook. And notice this. Uh, absolutely zero JVM dependency. I can have no JVM on, on my laptop, and this works. Um, and it also works with things like AWS Glue, uh, you know, uh, Iceberg REST, any any cloud vendors you have, Azure, uh, you know, uh, AWS, Google Cloud. It all works out of the box, simple pip install. Um, so I think that's kind of like the beauty of uh, uh, having a purely Python environment, right? So um, yeah, I'm gonna hop back to my presentation. Um, that's that's really it. Uh, so if you want to try it out, like you know, like I showed you, it's very simple to get started. Just pip install it to get that. Uh, you can pip install it together with Iceberg as well, and you can find out more about what we're working on at getdaft.io. Um, if anybody's working on large scale data processing, especially with Spark, and you're having a lot of pains with Spark uh, in this new world of like machine learning AI and like the interesting types of data that we now work with, uh, we would love to chat. Yeah. Um, thanks for tuning in.
Yes, question over there. Uh, question I was just playing with this. Uh, um, I really noticed there are very strict similarities between using that as well as using like, for example, um, so I was basically using like Soda. Like, yes. Uh, that TV also. Yes. Like, very, very similar. Correct. I think in terms of basic data as well as all the data, it's quite similar to the data. So, um, like in terms of like performance wise, like how is actually Gas as a complete engine supposed to like, for example, like Soda? I, I haven't done those all performance wise. So yes. So I'm going to repeat the question for the sake of the recording. Yeah. Uh, question is, Daft, at least locally, uh, feels and looks very similar to something like Polars or DuckDB. Yeah. So how does it compare performance-wise and also maybe feature-wise to something like Polars or DuckDB? Yeah, yeah. Right. OK. So I'm going to answer this question by saying that like today, uh, in my biased opinion, DuckDB is the fastest and best local engine uh, by quite a large margin today. Um, Daft actually. I think this week, are we cutting this week? Uh, that this week, we will be cutting our new local engine, which is a very different mode of computing for local. And, and that will be a pure streaming execution engine, which gives us a lot better memory stability. And it's a lot closer to what DuckDB has, right? And so as of the end of this week, we will be about 10, 10 to 20% slower than DuckDB on a single machine for something like TPCH. Um, but the benefit you get with us, though, is that uh, you know, we are not a SQL focused engine. We are a Python focused engine. And also number two, we go distributed, right? So if you ever enter a realm where you have more data than you can process on a single machine, maybe you need GPUs, maybe you need to scan 10 terabytes of data from the cloud. That's where you want to start considering, uh, I need to use something like that. And it's as simple as, I don't think I demoed this, but literally like if you need to run Daft uh, in the cloud, all you do is you, import daft and you just, uh, oh, where did my import daft go? You import daft and then you just call like daft context set runner ray. So we rely on you running your own cluster, but then if you have a ray cluster running, just point daft to the address. And now instead of executing on your machine, uh, all the execution will happen on the cluster. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we are purpose building daft to be very, very AI ML focused. Um, my advice is usually, hey, if SQL and analytics is all you need, then yeah, stick with DuckDB, stick with Spark, stick with Trino. But if you're looking to, I think, uh, get on this new wave with us, then uh, we think that we're building kind of the next iteration of something like Spark. Yeah. Small thing I would ask that too is that, you know, as Jay said, like DuckDB and Polars are, you know, great local engines, yeah. but they're kind of, in this minima where they assume you're running it on your laptop. Yeah, yeah. And so when you're running things with files like on your disk, yeah. it's actually quite, quite performant. Yeah. But once you use DuckDB or Polars with data in the cloud, like with Iceberg, yeah. it's actually quite slow. Yeah. You gotta have the abstraction where you're assuming everything is local. Yeah. So actually for all the benchmarks that we've ran and people like Daniel Beach and a few other bloggers who have done metrics yeah. as well, it shows that that's like at least two to three times faster than DuckDB and Polars when it comes to like these cloud rates. Yeah. So if you do benchmark, uh, I would highly advise, yes, benchmark the local files with like NVMe SSD, but also definitely try benchmarking against Parquet files in S3, right? That will really show you how Daft is uh, doing the log. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so specifically for that point, when you access Iceberg data through DuckDB and uh, Polars today, uh, I believe they are actually just using Pi Iceberg directly. And so they just use whatever Pi Iceberg has, which is an arrow Pi arrow based reader. We have our own reader. And so everything is hyper optimized. All we, all we ask Pi Iceberg for is, hey, give me the path to the files. And then we just do our own thing from there. And that's why it's a lot faster. Yeah, great question. Thanks for tuning in.